Hey, welcome back to another video for our C-Sharp projects. Right now we're in part two of our activity. I'm going to now transform our simple timer game into a simple game where we have to click a target. So you can see the instructions here are to place a new button on the screen called Target, and then we will move it around in a random fashion. So if we're going to make this into a game, let's uh, redesign the board a little bit. Let's take start, stop, and reset and move them toward the bottom so that they're out of the way. Now I'm going to take a new button and call it Target. So I'll drag the button onto the screen, rename his text, and rename his name. Now there's two things I want to do with a target. One is I want to move it around randomly. So let's go and look at our timer one event. So right now, all it does is update the label. I'm going to move this button now. So I need a random number generator to be able to make the game more interesting. So I'll create a variable, and I like to use the word RNG, which stands for Random Number Generator, and that will be used throughout the program. So we'll put it at the top of the screen. So the goal here is that every time the timer ticks, we're going to relocate the button. So the properties for the X and Y coordinates of your button are called Button Top and Button Left. And we will use the random number generator to take a random number between 0 and the width of the form and 0 and the height of the form. Let's see how this works. So you can see, as I'm running, every tenth of a second the timer ticks and the button is moving in a random location all over the screen. Well, this is obviously pretty hard to work with for the user, so let's change the value of the timer. So I'll probably want to change the interval of the timer during the game, so let's make the uh, interval right up here. So I'm going to set the interval of the timer to be a thousand. So I'm also going to uh, set the new timer interval here in the form1 constructor. So timer1.interval equals the variable called timer interval, And I'll correct the spelling here. So this should slow down the timer now. Let's see if it works better. So now the target is moving around the screen, but once every thousand milliseconds, or once every second or so. Now back into the program, let's uh, give it some score here. So I'm going to create a variable called hits, and that'll, that'll keep track of how many times I've clicked the button. Now let's go and add a new a label so we can keep track of our score and show the user. So let's put label 2 on the screen. Now, for uh, if a person clicks on target, we want to add a click event. So let's double click on target and add a point to our hits. So we can simply update the hits with a plus plus increment. Then we'll set the label text to be the hits dot to string. All right, so we got the game running. What happens if I click the target now? So if I click the target, I should see some points eventually showing up here. There, I got one. Two, three. Okay, now obviously I have not coordinated the uh, target clicking along with the timer. So the timer has not started and uh, the button is already moving. So there's some logic work to do. But I'm going to leave a lot of this design to you. So let's talk about extending the game. So now you've created a basic game with a timer control. Let's add some features now. So, number one, let's keep, let's keep track of the number of points that the user has gotten by hitting the target button. So now you have to also decide, what if they miss the button and they click the form? So if they just click the, ba the base of the form, should they get a penalty, subtract points? We have a number of lives that they can lose. Will it give them a timer penalty? You decide. Also, let's modify the appearance of the buttons and the color of the background images. So instead of making a target button, we could put a picture control on the screen. And picture controls work very nicely with graphics. Also, you need to decide how this game is going to end. Does the person get 60 seconds? Do they get a number of hits? And then you give them a score of the lowest number of time for 50 hits? So you decide how the game is supposed to be played. Also, we should have a reset button for play again. So if the user is, uh, if he lost, and uh, keep his high score around, and then show, show a new game. The label on the, on the timer needs to be updated. 
the format of the of the time is in like thousands of or millionths of a second. It's not very good. Let's create a second button called a false target or don't click me. Use it as a decoy so the, the user doesn't uh, click there or gets a penalty if he does. Also for each level increase, make the game more difficult. You could make the target smaller, you could make the game run faster, but make something incrementally harder. Also finally add some levels. So multiple levels would make the uh, change the scenery maybe, change the song. You get to choose. So you can see that my implementation of the game turned out like this. I picked a background and instead of using a target for a button, I put a picture on. And the user is supposed to click the donut and he gets a point for clicking a donut. If you click on the uh, vegetables, you get a negative 10. If you click on the background, it looks like you get a minus 5. And so we've got ourselves a background, a couple of pictures. I still haven't implemented levels, but what I have implemented is a nice resize feature. So if you drag the window larger, these buttons automatically stick to the bottom of the screen and the, uh, the donut and the vegetables don't bounce off the edge. So go research some of the things that you can do with multimedia, with graphics, where uh, you can make a game a little bit more interesting than the one I've made.